Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're back once again with another amazing science tutorial video. I'm Coach Spivey, joined my son Jordan Spivey, and in this tutorial video, we're going to be looking at nuclear fission versus nuclear fusion. So let's get started. So let's start off by understanding what an unstable nuclei is. And a nucleus becomes unstable or radioactive when there are too many protons in the nucleus of an atom. And remember, this happens because protons have light charges and push away from each other. And then any atom with more than 83 protons is considered to be radioactive. So to the right, I have two atoms up here. If you notice, this first atom has 94 protons in the nucleus. So those are a lot of protons trying to push away or repel from each other. And then it has 150 neutrons. So an element with 94 protons, that's automatically going to be plutonium. And you can check on your periodic table as well to see if I'm correct. And then in order to get our atomic mass of 239, we just added 94 plus 150, and they gave us that 239. And I put atomic mass beside it, just in case some people wonder where we got that number from. So now, once again, it has 94 protons in the middle, and that's what makes it radioactive because all these positive charges are pushing away from each other. And then now, let's look at our next one. And then this element has 92 protons in it. And so the element that has 92 protons is going to be uranium. And then if we take a look at its atomic mass, this should give us 238. So we're looking at uranium-238. Once again, it has more than 83 protons in that nucleus, which means that all these protons are trying to repel or push away from each other. And that's what makes this nucleus unstable or radioactive. Now let's take a look at nuclear fission which is the splitting of an atomic nucleus into two smaller pieces. And what occurs is that large atoms are split into smaller atoms, releasing neutrons and large amounts of energy. And the energy produced from one kilogram of uranium-235 is the same as burning 17,000 kilograms of coal. So with that small amount of uranium-235, you get a large amount of energy produced. And then the lost mass from each atom is converted into energy. And this is what's used in nuclear power plants. And the reason why nuclear power plants like to use uranium-235 is because the atom with this small amount of resource used, it can create a lot of energy. And so if we take a look over here to the right, we have a nuclear chain reaction. And so if we look, the first thing that happens in this nuclear chain reaction is that a neutron is fired into the nucleus of uranium-235. And if we look, the second thing that happens, this uranium-235 is split and split into smaller elements. So we have krypton right here and we have barium right here. And then once they split, they release neutrons and a lot of energy as well. So if you notice, these three neutrons, they go hit each one of these uranium-235 atoms and it caused them to split and release large amounts of energy as well and this chain reaction goes on and on and on and that's why they call it a nuclear chain reaction because it releases great amounts of energy that continues to go on and on and now let's dive deeper into nuclear chain reactions and this is when neutrons that are released during the splitting of one nucleus trigger a series of nuclear fissions and we have two types of nuclear chain reactions we have our first and most dangerous one, which is an uncontrolled chain reaction. And this is when nothing regulates the amount of neutrons that can cause nuclear fission, which makes it a very fast, intense release of energy. And this is what we use in nuclear weapons. And I want to go back to one word in here, regulate. And what it means by to regulate to something is to slow down or control the flow of something. So in an uncontrolled chain reaction, there is nothing to regulate or slow down the flow of the release of neutrons. And remember, these neutrons hit other atoms and cause large amounts of energy to be released from them as well. But since it's uncontrolled, nothing is slowing down or regulating it. So that's why we like to use them in nuclear weapons because once those events occur, it can cause large amounts of energy to be released and therefore cause large amounts of destruction, unfortunately. And more times than not, we don't want those type of problems. So that's why we've done away with most of the nuclear weapons, or we were supposed to. 
And then we take a look. Our next one is a control chain reaction. Now, when we say control, that means it can be re regulated. So that means some of the neutrons are absorbed by materials which help to regulate how many nuclear fissions occur and therefore the rate and amount of energy that is released. So this is very, very important. And this is why we like to use controlled chain reactions in a nuclear power plant because we can regulate and slow down how much energy is being released by controlling the amount of neutrons that are released and actually hit other uranium-235 atoms. And then the heat from this reaction is used in those nuclear power plants. So here's an example of a nuclear power plant right here. And now let's look at an example of a nuclear chain reaction. So if you notice we have this ping pong ball being dropped on top of these other ping pong balls that are sitting on these mouse traps. And look at the amount of energy that is being released as more ping pong balls are being released and more energy is being transferred. So let's take a look at it one more time. And this is a great example of what a nuclear chain reaction looks like. So now let's look at the pros and cons of using nuclear energy produced by fission reactions. So let's take a look at our pros first. So around 20% of the United States electricity actually comes from nuclear energy. A small amount can create a large amount of energy as opposed to the amounts needed for fossil fuels. And then other power plants burning fossil fuels which pollute the air and environment and lead to global warming. Nuclear power plants do not release pollutants into the air and the environment. So if you look at a nuclear power plant, it's actually a much cleaner source of energy than it would be as burning to as opposed to burning fossil fuels. And then if we look at the cons of using nuclear energy fission, exposure to nuclear radiation can be deadly. So if you was ever to get exposed to that, it can be deadly or it can cause cancers. Then nuclear fission of uranium-235 produces radioactive waste with half-lives of hundreds of thousands of years. So it must be stored safely away from people so that it doesn't contaminate the environment. And then a nuclear meltdown would negatively impact the environment for thousands of years due to the long half-lives of the elements used in nuclear fission. So even though it's a cleaner source of energy than fossil fuels, if it was ever to get exposed or to leak or to get out, then it could impact our environment for hundreds of thousands of years. So we must take very proper care of it to make sure that it's not exposed to humans. Nuclear fusion is when the nuclei of two smaller atoms combine to form a larger nucleus which releases large amounts of energy. And nuclear fusion occurs in sun and other stars which exist as plasma. Nuclear fusion requires very high temperatures to occur. Currently, we lack the technology because we don't have the technology to actually recreate those high temperatures that occur, occur within the sun and other stars. And then the fusion of deuterium and tritium produces helium, neutrons, and energy. So let's go ahead and look at the reactants for this reaction. So our reactants are going to be deuterium and tritium. And I'll go ahead and put reactants right here. And these two reactants are going to fuse together in order to create our products. And so what they create, they actually create the atom helium, but also another product that is created is energy. And then we have a neutron that is released. Now let's take a look at the differences between nuclear fission and nuclear fusion. Notice that in nuclear fission, a heavy nucleus is broken down into smaller and lighter nuclei. And then if you look at nuclear fusion, two light nuclei are combined to form a heavy nucleus. And then nuclear fusion involves chain reaction, while nuclear fusion does not involve a chain reaction. Then in nuclear fusion, the heavy nucleus is bombarded with neutrons. And then nuclear fusion, light nuclei are heated to an extremely high temperature to fuse together and create a larger element. And then nuclear fission, we do have the proper mechanisms to control fission reaction for generating electricity, which means that we have the technology to actually create a nuclear fission reaction. But in nuclear fusion, the proper mechanisms to control fusion reaction are yet to be developed. So this means we don't have or we lack the technology to recreate those nuclear fusion reactions. Remember, we can't recreate those reactions because it requires extremely high temperatures. And then the disposal of nuclear waste is a great environmental problem in nuclear fission. But if you look at nuclear fusion, disposal of nuclear waste is not involved. So it's actually a much cleaner energy source. 
And then nuclear fission, raw material is not easily available and it's costly. But in nuclear fusion, raw material is comparatively cheap and easily available. We just currently lack the technology to recreate this process. Now it's time for your check for understanding. And you're going to use your knowledge of nuclear fission versus nuclear fusion to answer the following questions below. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope this tutorial over nuclear fission versus nuclear fusion has been beneficial and helpful to you. We hope you got a lot out of it. Once again, I'm Coach Spivey, signing off with my son Jordan Spivey. And make sure you have a wonderful, awesome, positive day. Peace.